so day five started off with some breakfast. Cut to anxiety attack and three, <laughs> two. It's pretty cloudy today. Morgan. And the first thing that we were gonna do was take the gondola up to the highest point here in Zermatt. In total, we took three gondolas up to the top and it took about 30 minutes to get all the way to the top, which was about two and a half miles up. <laughs> there are several places where you can kind of go out and around and just have this big panoramic view where you have the Matterhorn, which is one of the tallest mountains in the world, off on this side, and you're above the clouds, and it's cold. It's really pretty. I wasn't expecting how bright it would be, and so like almost all of our pictures were just like squinting because it was painful to open your eyes. We journeyed back down after about 30 minutes at the top of the gondola. Zoom out. Way down there. Grabbed a quick bite, I ate a small little quiche, and then we headed back to the hotel to drop off our stuff because we would be going paragliding that day. Way to do some skydive. Or no, not sky, paragliding, yeah. <laughs> Have you ever paraglided before, Sarah? No, I've skydived, but never paraglided. I hope I don't lose my GoPro. So it was me, Sarah, and Caleb that were going paragliding, and we met up with one of the guides that would be taking us, and his name was Mike. Mike is like one of those guys that you see in a movie that you don't think actually exists. He, he's native born of Zermatt, he knows five languages, he's been to 55 countries, he's had over two or 3,000 flights, and he's 30. We took a train ride up where we'd be starting the paragliding from, and then got all suited up. Sarah was with the weathered old timer Bruno. Kayla was with 55 country, five language Mike. And I was with a guy named Eric who looked like the bassist from the Red Hot Chili Peppers. And once we were suited up, we got ready to take off. Mike was telling us that he can take paragliding trips that go up to seven hours before he comes back to the ground by hitting these thermals, which are these pockets of hot air that kind of send you back up. And so right at the beginning of our flight, we were able to hit one of the thermals. And so we were several hundred feet above where we actually started. And we're kind of just spiraling and coming around. All three of the guides were telling us that today was one of the most perfect days that they've seen in a while. There were barely any clouds, it was nice and windy, the sun was out, and the fact that they had such a good and heavy snowfall last season meant that when it all melted and soaked into the ground, that the ground was really lush and green this year. And so we ended up staying up for almost 30 minutes, and I think a part of that was our guides just having a really good time enjoying this near-perfect weather for paragliding. Because even after 5,000 flights, it still seemed really fun for them. Eric flew us over to this area that was the side of a mountain and there was this lodge and we had flown over the lodge and I could actually see the people down there and I was waving at them and then he came down around the side of the mountain and he was getting relatively close and I couldn't reach out and touch but he was getting pretty close to the side of the mountain. Sarah said at that point that she was above me and she could see about how close I was getting. She's like, ugh. And Bruner had told her, yeah, Eric likes to go down to the next to the mountain. I don't like to do that. <laughs> we would kind of swoop in, but then he'd make a hard bank left, and I think that was probably the moments that it felt most like I was flying, where it was like, yeah. After some of the hard banks, my stomach was kind of churning a little bit, but once we leveled out, I felt okay. And so we started flying back over the city and kind of maybe 10 minutes out from landing, and Eric was asking if I wanted to fly a little bit, and so I actually got to steer, and I noticed when you, when you pulled down hard that it kind of, you, you, you glided down slower and then when you kind of let them up, it was a, you could feel yourself falling a little bit faster and you could bank left and bank right. And after that, he took the reins and he's like, you want to do some tricks? And I was like, yeah, let's do some tricks. And so he starts spinning hard left and spinning hard right. And I'm like, man, this is a lot of fun, but my stomach does not feel very good. But I wanted to do the trick, so we kept going and then he kind of, he kind of leveled us out and then we started going. And then as we were flying over the city, I turned to my right and threw up all over the place. But luckily it only got on the sleeve of the, the jumping suit. It did not get on Eric, thankfully. 
um, and it didn't get on anywhere else on me. I don't know exactly what we were over, but we were definitely over the city. And so I was apologizing oh, profusely. So I'm so sorry. And Eric was a pretty quiet guide as it was, and he wasn't really saying much except Whoa, when it happened. And, but they were all really gracious about it, saying, you aren't the first one, you won't be the last one, and it happens all the time. And even Mike said after his first flight, he was actually feeling kind of nauseous. And so it was kind of embarrassing, but I was I was mainly worried that I'd actually gotten yeah. a little bit on Mike, because I can imagine how unpleasant that could be. I felt better after that, though. The stupid quiche. Caleb, you said uh, you got a little sick, too? Yeah, I mean, I, I could hold it though, you know. Most people can hold it. <laughs> Most people. <laughs> Sarah, did you get nauseous at all? Yeah, I got nauseous. Yeah. What'd you think of the whole thing? It's pretty incredible. Yeah. Sarah got Bruno, the one I want. So after that, we hung out for a little bit, and then Caleb was packing up because he was going to be leaving a day early to make his friend's <laughs> wedding. Guys are always so hard. <laughs> all righty. All right. See you Bye. Later. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> And on the way back to the hotel, we stopped at the Lint chocolate store, which are those little chocolates, those little spherical chocolates, which are Swiss made, I didn't know. And I don't really care much for chocolates in general, but those are the only chocolates that I actually kind of get excited about. We went into this store and they had a ton of unreleased flavors. We got a lot of those. I'm gonna try the strawberry one. Strawberries and cream. It tastes like the strawberry strawberry milk that I usually have in elementary school. Is that a good thing? That's pretty good, but I usually couldn't finish the carton. I like the first two sips were really Can good. Try one? That uh, one was sea salt, maybe? Milk no, coconut. Milk no, coconut. Oh! Does it taste exactly like it sounds? Yeah. Milk coconut? I'm afraid of coconut now, but I don't know about coconut and chocolate. And that was pretty much it. We called it a night a little bit early, but I think Zermatt's probably been my favorite place so far. It almost feels like an amusement park. Like, everything's a walking path. There aren't even cars here. There aren't even roads to get here. It's mostly bikes and these little buggies that look like those square droids on Star Wars. But it's not an amusement park. It's like a real place with real beautiful mountains, and so it's crazy. But that brings us to day six. For the record, I wanted these little morning after reviews to feel more authentic, but it's so hard to find a quiet place. Those church bells have been going for five minutes now. <laughs>